Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and this week we're talking about the upcoming space mission, the James Webb Telescope. So let's go! The James Webb Telescope, JWST, is not just another astronomer's toy we're sending to space to add to the billion other pieces of junk we have up there. JWST is the biggest telescope ever to be sent to space. Its primary mirror is 6.5 meters in diameter, over six times larger collecting area than its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble's primary mirror is just 2.5 meters in diameter, but at half the mass, it's over 100 kilograms lighter. It's this mirror area that allows JWST to see the faintest and furthest away of galaxies because the bigger mirror size you have, the more light you can collect. It will literally see the first galaxies that were formed right after the Big Bang 13.5 billion years ago. JWST is so large that they couldn't find a rocket large enough to send it into space. In fact, this is one of the reasons it's taken so long to launch, but we'll get into that in a sec. To make it work, the engineers had to design it in a way that it could fold up into the Ariane 5 rocket fairing, which is just five meters in size. That doesn't sound so bad until you realize that the sun shield is the size of a tennis court. Now, this sun shield is critical to the mission. Even though JWST is the successor of Hubble, there isn't actually very much overlap with the wavelengths of light that Hubble observes. JWST observes from the visible to the mid-infrared wavelengths. It's with the infrared that JWST can see through the thick clouds of gas and dust that the first galaxies form in, but also the molecular clouds where stars are born and entire planetary systems. Infrared imaging is often known as thermal imaging. It's the hot things that appear bright, but the Earth, Sun and Moon also emit thermal radiation that can contaminate those signals. So that's where the sun shield comes in. The shield is designed to keep the telescope and its instruments on board permanently in the shade. It helps to cool it down to minus 233 degrees Celsius. Each layer in the five layer shield is thinner than the width of a human hair. So it's no surprise that it ripped when they tried to deploy it in testing last year. JWST is also the most complex thing ever to be sent to space. If it survives being folded up like origami and then launched into space on a turn of explosives across 1.5 million kilometers to the Lagrange point two or L2, this is a point in space where the gravitational forces allow it to stay put with very little fuel consumption. But this means that unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, it won't be serviceable our astronauts won't be able to go out there for repairs or to even upgrade the instrument. Once launched, it will be all on its own. Over several weeks, JWST will have to unravel itself to reach its full form. First, it's solar panels for energy, then the five layers of that ultra thin sun shield, the primary mirror to collect the light, and then the secondary mirror to direct the light into the telescope and the tertiary mirror. Each of the 18 honeycomb shaped mirrors on the primary mirror will also have to align themselves into focus. But to make them act like a single large mirror, each piece needs to be aligned to one of 10,000th the thickness of a human hair. All the while maintaining that minus 233 degrees Celsius temperature. The engineers literally had to invent how to do this. So yes, JWST is an amazing piece of tech. It has been in development since 1996 with an initial budget of 500 million US dollars. But the complexity has meant that what was originally supposed to be a launch in 2007 is only just being launched now at the total cost of $1 billion. Will all of this be worth it? Well, in terms of science, I would say yes. The reason JWST is often compared to Hubble is that it has such a broad scope for science that will only allow us to look back at our universe across the entire timeline and at all scales. 
It will allow us to see the first stars and galaxies form out of the darkness of the early universe, teach us how galaxies evolve over time, but also give us opportunities to observe rings and small satellites in our own solar system. We all know that Saturn is surrounded by rings, but did you know that Uranus, Neptune and Jupiter do too? We just can't see them in visible wavelengths. Planetary rings are the only astrophysical disks that we can study up close, and if we understand them here, we can infer about disk processes around, for example, other stars. It's no question that JWST will be able to see new planetary systems form, but the spectrometer on board will also tell us about the atmosphere of the extrasolar planets and whether or not they contain the building blocks required for life. The opportunities of amazing science that can be achieved with JWST are vast, but for now we just need it to get to L2 in one piece and then make those one million maneuvers to get it online. Fingers crossed because it could be devastating for science if it fails. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.